I'm with uh, Professor David Larty, who has just finished uh, giving a presentation at the Faraday Summer Course, um, not for the first time. And uh, I just wondered, uh, perhaps you could tell us uh, what the Q&A session was like after your talk, and what was the kind of general thrust of people's questions? Right, well, there's a great deal of interest in uh, the way the genes uh, in environment interact to produce human psychology and behavior, and so a lot of the questions had to do with particular uh, behaviors, in particular uh, psychological states, um, you know, the genetic basis for homosexuality is a common one, of criminal behavior is a common one in, in aggression, um, and whether our understanding of the genetic basis for criminal behavior, for instance, should enter into the courts and should influence our politicians. Um, and there are also uh, questions dealing with uh, scientific niche partitioning, if you will, or specialization. So a behavioral neuroscientist was interested and maybe somewhat concerned that a behavioral geneticist would uh, require him to look at the genes when he's doing his own work. Uh, whereas, uh, and my response to that was basically that the, the specialization of disciplines and the different levels of, of a behavioral investigation uh, make it possible for, for instance, uh, a neuroscientist or an evolutionary biologist to study behavior without reference to the genes. Uh, and um, then there was uh, another question, I think a lot of concern in general in the, in the public about the meaning uh, to people of a particular genetic disorder. Uh, it seems like a lottery. Uh, to many people it seems unfair. How does it influence their religious beliefs and their belief about the, um, the importance of, of, of human health? Um, to, to realize that you're born with something that um, you inherited um, or that mutated within uh, uh, your parents' uh, sex cells and you're now stuck with this genetic disorder, whether it's a behavioral disorder or some other kind, uh, through no fault of your own. And so it's a personal issue that people have to deal with. So that's some of the, the range of ideas and issues that people brought up. And this is, of course, not your first time at a uh, Faraday event. That's right. I've um, been here twice before. What do you enjoy the most about the sorts of conversations that take place? Well, uh, in all of the, in the summer course and in our other um, activities of the Faraday Institute, I'm struck mostly by two things. One is the interdisciplinary nature of these get-togethers and how I can learn things about physics, about theology, about history, uh, about biology, other areas of biology that I know very little, um, and bring them all together. So that's the, the I, I love um, broad spectrum discussion and interdisciplinary um, work in general and then the conversation of course. And the other aspect that I like is the openness and friendliness, if you will, in an age of science to um, religion, to spirituality, to open discussion of issues like uh, purpose and destiny of human life and um, how that interacts with all different uh, areas of, of science and of social science and of the humanities. Um, I think it's very important uh, today that we leave those uh, discussions as open as possible and um, not bring our own prejudices to the table and as scientists for instance um, there are many atheistic scientists who would just have those discussions be part of the past and I'm very much glad that they're a part of the present. Professor Lati, thanks very much. Enjoy the rest of the week. You're welcome. Thank you.